Well, today I thought I would talk with you a little bit about how I record my music. If you know anything about my career and what I've been doing, I basically do a couple different kinds of music. I have a jazz trio that I perform with, that I record with, and then I also have quite a few uh, rock songs that I've written and recorded. The process of recording is completely different between those two different genres. With the jazz trio, it's actually fairly simple. You know, we play together all the time. We hook the mics all up and we play and we record. That's pretty much, you know, so much of it is just getting the, the mics placed right, but overall it's a pretty simple process. Uh, with the rock, I do all the instruments myself. And so the way I got the desire to do this, basically, uh, the inspiration, I think, was probably from Tom Schultz of Boston. He was one of my heroes growing up. Um, I always loved their music from the time I was in grade school. I still love their music. He recorded a lot of those instruments himself. In fact, I just heard a, an interview yesterday with a guitarist that was with Boston from the very beginning, and he said that uh, Tom Schultz actually replaced all their parts on the first album. He said the only thing that was on that album other than Tom Schultz was the singer. So anyway, I always knew that could be possible. And it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a big job doing all that. I mean, obviously I had to learn to play all the different instruments. So I play drums, I play guitar, bass, keyboards, and I sing. So the process of recording that is you do it one track at a time. So I basically will sing and play the guitar or the keyboard, piano, to lay down what they call a scratch track, just kind of to guide yourself through the song. And then I've done it different ways. After that, I start layering instruments. I might add some drums over that, and then later the bass, or maybe next I'll add the bass, and then later the drums. And so I'm basically layering these things one at a time. And so it's, uh, it's quite challenging, but I will tell you that all the recordings I've done, those have been the most rewarding, the ones where I've done everything myself. As far as the recording of those different instruments, the drums are the most difficult. When I record vocals, you know, it's just a matter of putting a microphone and it's kind of in the center of the room so you don't get too much reflection off the walls and stand about two feet from the mic and that's pretty much it. Uh, with the bass, you just plug it in. I use an electric bass. I just plug it into the computer. Basically, I've got an interface. Same is true with the guitar. I used to record with an amp, but now they have all these great amp simulators built into the software. You literally can't tell the difference and you have a choice of all these different amp sounds right in the computer, so it just makes more sense. With the drums, though, it can be very, very complicated. The, the one thing I will say about the drums, there are so many different ways of creating drum tracks. It's, uh, it's almost endless. And so no matter how you do it, you wonder if there's a better way. You know, if you're curious, like I am, I'm always experimenting. So one of the big differences between jazz and rock, too, is in jazz, primarily, it's about the performance itself. It's really not about the sound of the instruments. And so, you know, <clears throat> it's not about the creativity. In other words, people aren't trying to be creative, at least in acoustic jazz, with sounds. You're just trying to get a good bass sound, a good drum sound, a good piano sound. But it's not about trying to get a new sound, unless you're playing very contemporary jazz or jazz rock fusion or something like that. That's different. But anyway, that's one big difference. So with rock, the sounds are just as important as the performance, definitely. And so <clears throat> when a person talks about having a good drum sound within a rock setting, that can mean so many different things. And even though I was a drummer for many, many years, I didn't pay that much attention to drum sounds. I was just, you know, there to play the drums and I let other people think about the sound of those. But as I've learned to produce my own music, I've realized there is a huge difference between the drum sounds on a Boston album versus a, a band like The Outfield from the 80s. If you listen to that song, Your Love by The Outfield, you hear a gated reverb on the snare. It's very prominent. It's the loudest thing on that song. It's as loud as the vocal. And so that's, that can make a huge difference in the way that the song sounds and the uh, emotions generated. So anyway, when I first started recording rock music myself, when I started recording the drums, I basically used a bunch of cheap mics. I had a cheap set. I didn't know anything about treating the room. And so what happens is you get all kinds of reflections off the walls and off the ceilings. And 
they got the job done, but it never sounded good. It sounded like it was recorded, you know, in, in someone's basement because I didn't know what I was doing. And then <clears throat> eventually I came across a couple books, and one of them said the easiest way to record drums, he said, definitely the easiest way was electronically, which I agree if you just want to get a good sound, you know. So I've done recordings where I just plugged the keyboards in. I didn't have any electronic drums, but I basically played the hi-hat and the snare with two keys and then overdubbed the bass drum and snare drum, did it all separate. Sounded great, you know, it didn't have a great feel to it because it's different than playing a whole set, but that worked. And when you record that way, what you're really doing is you're using samples. Samples really easy to understand. Basically, you know, if you have a snare drum and you have an amazing studio in New York City or Los Angeles or Nashville or wherever, they will actually stick a microphone on a snare drum in that studio and record it, you know, a sample of it, a, the sound of it. And so when I hit the keyboard, that sound, it's going to sound like that snare drum. It's literally a recording of that snare drum. So what I'm doing now, because I don't want to, there, there's lots of different reasons for this. Number one, I don't have a perfectly treated room. My jazz set doesn't really sound good in a rock setting. I could change all the heads. It would sound better. But what I'm, my current experiment is, if you see all these wires on my drums here, I've got um, triggers on my drums. And these are basically really tiny microphones, and those are going into the computer, and those actually trigger all kinds of different drum samples. So again, it sounds like this amazing set when I play. So it's very, very complicated. You know, sometimes if it's, if it's set too sensitive, you hit it and you get two hits. Or if it's not sensitive enough, it won't pick up all the hits. So there's so many different things and it's very complicated. But anyway, that's what I'm currently working on. So, you know, and that's the reason why it takes a long time to produce this kind of music sometimes. Because when I recorded my second jazz CD, we went in the studio, we set up some mics and within two days we were done. We had already rehearsed those songs together. But when you're layering all these things, part, you know, piece by piece or instrument by instrument, and you're also experimenting as you go and learning how to do all these things different ways, it can take a long time. So it's a labor of love, you know? It's very satisfying, but it's also a lot of work, and I have to find the time to do this around everything else that I do, because I perform sometimes, you know, five to seven or eight times a week, and so I'm always having to practice my instruments. There's all kinds of things that have to be done, collecting money and sending out invoices and booking the jobs and all kinds of things. But anyway, I just thought you'd find it interesting. Um, if you have never seen how musicians record this music, uh, it can be quite an interesting and involved process. So hope you found that interesting. And uh, if you have any questions and you want me to go into more detail, uh, please send me an email and I'll, I'll be happy to answer whatever questions you have. Thank you very much.